Hi. So I brought some birds. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm Peter, and I'm uh, the Mighty Eagle and CMO at Rovio. So Rovio is a company that made these things, so we made Angry Birds. And uh, it's perfectly okay to play the game during my talk, so you know, feel free to do that. No problem at all. So we really want to make sure that you're entertained. Uh, yeah, so uh, what I thought I'd do today is talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the story behind Angry Birds. And then also things that are very kind of close to my heart, uh, namely entrepreneurship and then uh, education. So uh, with Angry Birds, uh, we actually started, uh, okay, Angry Birds itself, the game, uh, about three years ago. But the Robio story starts uh, a bit before that. And uh, I was actually working at uh, HP, so one of these, you know, big corporations. Uh, back in Helsinki, and uh, I organized a competition. Uh, and this was the time when, you know, like this other Finnish company, they did uh, the first smartphones. So Nokia came out with, uh, with some uh, camera phones. So we organized a competition uh, to see, you know, who could create the best possible mobile multiplayer game. And then uh, Niklas and two of his friends, they were students at the Helsinki University of Technology. They took part in the competition, and okay, not only did, did they take part, they created this game called King of the Cabbage World, and they won. So they won the competition. And uh, after that, they came to me and said, okay, now what? We won this competition, we created this game, what should we do now? And, uh, you know, then had a chat with them and, uh, you know, uh, realized they really, really uh, love uh, playing games and making games. And okay, I'm a big believer in, you know, uh, doing what you love. And there's even like this uh, Chinese saying by Confucius like a couple of thousands years ago that, that if you um, love what you do, you don't have to work a single day in your life. So I always tell people that I stopped working many, many years ago. Because if it starts feeling like work, you're know, probably doing the wrong thing. And that's actually the first kind of like important thing to keep in mind here. Uh, that, you know, if you don't love what you do, you know, and really think about this, you're probably doing the wrong thing and you should do something else. But anyway, so I told uh, Niklas that, uh, and his friends that, okay, you know, uh, why don't you start a company to make games? Because that's what you kind of like love doing. And this was in 2003, 10 years ago. So they started a company and started making games. And I kind of like told them that, okay, you know, like, why don't you start making games? It's easy and all of that. Actually, it wasn't that easy. Um, took 51 games, and then Angry Birds. So, you know, when you look at Angry Birds, yeah, it's kind of like an overnight success story that took a couple of years, 51 games, then the 52nd game was Angry Birds. So, uh, I think this is very typical also for, like, startups and for entrepreneurs that uh, there are very few of these uh, overnight success stories. And, I mean, we heard uh, from previous speakers as well that, you know, like, you... You fail, you fail, and then, you know, hopefully you succeed. So you just have to believe. And I think that uh, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're doing a startup, you have to be a bit crazy like that, that, you know, like 51 games and you're still going and then, you know, 50 seconds and create Angry Birds. So, uh, yeah, not an overnight success story. And uh, I guess that, uh, you know, I got inspired by, you know, like the talk of... Uh, the American dream. So what we're doing is we're doing the Finnish dream. And it's, uh, you know, slightly bigger, of course, you know, being from Finland. So uh, what, we, what we created with, uh, with Angry Birds out of Helsinki, you know, like middle of nowhere, uh, we built the fastest growing consumer brand ever. So 11th of December 2009, we launched Angry Birds the game. And as I said, our 52nd game. And, uh, okay, how did we then get to number one? Okay, being from Finland, this was a country kind of like dominated by Nokia. So to get to number one in Finland, we just told like friends and family that, okay, why don't you go download the game? 
They did number one in Finland. I guess they call it word of mouth marketing. But it worked. So uh, that's what we did. And, uh, and then uh, actually um, after that, we became number one in Sweden. There we actually got a bit lucky because that was the uh, spring of 2010, Winter Olympics in Vancouver. Anja Persson, fairly uh, well-known skier in Sweden, she fell and couldn't participate. Then she got interviewed on Swedish TV and she was saying that, oh, it really sucks. I mean, I, I have nothing to do. I can only hang out at the hotel, can't participate, but at least there's Angry Birds, number one in Sweden. And uh, so um, you need a bit of luck. Actually, on the topic of luck, I, I'm a big believer, somebody mentioned that before, that you have to make your own luck. And I think that, okay, making 51 games, we kind of like did a bit of that. So we learned and we made our own luck. But the way we built Angry Birds, we actually tried to eliminate luck every step of the process. So if you go eight months back, you know, before we launched the game, uh, we really analyzed the market very, very carefully. We looked at the market, you know, what does it take to create a hit, a hit game or actually any, any kind of like hit entertainment product. And then really trying to eliminate luck every step of the process. Example of the attention to detail, you know, during the development was that we did more than 30 uh, different version of the app icon itself. You know, we really uh, tried to uh, focus on every little detail. So you could say that we had like an insane attention to detail in everything. And uh, yeah, we looked at, you know, like what would it look like to have a red icon at the top of the app store? And okay, now we know that it looked very good and it looked good for more than 300 days. So we stayed for uh, number one for more than 300 days with the original Angry Birds. And that's 10 times longer than than kind of like any of our competitors have been there, so uh, not, too, not too shabby. But yeah, anyway, so I said, okay, became number one in, Swe uh, in Finland, in Sweden, and then Apple noticed what was going on, so they featured us in the UK, number one in the UK in the spring of 2010, and then uh, same thing in the US and uh, more than 100 countries. So that was kind of like the beginning and the start of Angry Birds. At that time, uh, I also started talking about... Uh, our ambition uh, within the company, but also outside. And I think this is another very, very important thing. So besides, you know, really believing that you'll make it, you know, 51 games, then the 52nd one uh, finally have a, a huge hit, uh, you also have to have ambition and ideally massive ambition. And I think this is something that uh, very often uh, uh, startups, in, uh, especially in Europe, that's what I see in Finland, and I, I think uh, it's actually all over Europe that uh, our startups are not ambitious enough. And this is something that is uh, uh, very, very important. That, you know, of course we're going to build the biggest thing ever. So what we started doing in the spring of 2010 is that, okay, we're going to have 100 million downloads for Angry Birds. Okay, now that doesn't sound like that much anymore, but uh, at the time, only one game, Tetris, had had that. So if you buy like, you know, the uh, last year's edition, or actually, you know, last year I think they were reconnected, but like uh, two years ago, you buy the uh, Guinness uh, uh, Book of World Records, there is, you know, like I mentioned there that, okay, most downloaded game ever, Tetris, 100 million copies. And it took Tetris uh, 20 years to get there. So when I started talking about our ambition, you know, our Tetris strategy, uh, we're going to have 100 million downloads. At the time, we had maybe two or three. Nobody believed us. Not within the company, not outside. But again, you know, crazy entrepreneurs, you have to believe, you have to have crazy ambition. So uh, what happened actually then in the first year of Angry Birds, in December 2010, we hit 50 million, five zero million downloads. And uh, I mean, that was already like really, really good. Then uh, Christmas happened, we added another 25 million. And in March 2011, we hit our goal of 100 million. Much, much faster than I ever thought we'd do that. Thank you. But as I always say, uh, a good start, because then the second 
12 months of Angry Birds, we added 550 million downloads. And then uh, in the spring of last year, we hit a billion. Billion downloads. It's a big number, but it's only like one billion. So, you know, there's seven billion people on the planet. So again, a good start. And uh, in uh, uh, March this year, we announced our latest set of numbers, 1.7 billion. So, uh, you know, we're doing uh, our best to get to the second billion very, very fast. So, you know, it's the finished dream. It's pretty big. Uh, anyway, um, but if you then look at uh, what we've done with the game, so it's the most downloaded piece of entertainment content, you know, more downloaded than any book, any piece of music, any movie ever. And, uh, but then it's just a game, and we are not just a games company. So the plan from the beginning was to build a brand, so use the game to build a brand. And what we have now done with the game, we built the fastest growing consumer brand ever. We've grown faster than Google, YouTube, Facebook, Skype, you name it. We did a survey, uh, or actually one of our partners did that last year in China. Interviewed 2,000 Chinese people, 94% know the brand of Angry Birds. 94%. We're still like looking into what happened with the, thanks, with the six percent because you know 1.3 billion people in China, six percent of that is a lot, so we need to figure it out. But yeah, it's pretty good for, you know, a brand that started on mobile, started on digital, to reach that kind of brand awareness. And uh, we're only getting started. So um, we started with the game, then we expanded into animation. We are now running uh, the biggest animation studio in Northern Europe. We just launched our uh, Angry Birds Toons uh, animated series in March. And uh, if you have one of our games on your iPhone, Android device, when uh, you started the game, uh, 18th of March, you had a new button. Instead of just the play button, you had the watch button, the Angry Birds Toons button. You click on that and you're instantly connected to our animated series, but most importantly, you are connected to our channel, our Angry Birds Toons channel, in 1.7 billion games. So what we created overnight with our animations, with our games, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, video distribution networks on the planet. Bigger audience than ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox. Those are some US broadcasters. Bigger than those guys combined. Combined. <laughs> so it's the Finnish dream <laughs> to repeat it again, once again. But I, I, I think that it's, uh, it's a good example of you know, what you can do in this digital mobile age. Couple of guys. You know, students from Helsinki, the Helsinki uh, uh, the University of Technology can do this. And there's nothing in our DNA or nothing in, kind of like in us that is different from, you know, anybody here in this room. If we can create Angry Birds in Helsinki, who's going to create the next one here in Lithuania? Raise your hand. Come on. You have to believe. I mean, if you're running companies here, there's no reason why you can't. Hey, we could do it. A couple of guys. Of course, it helps that we're from Finland and, you know, Finnish people are known for being the best marketeers and branding people on the planet. But, I mean, still, you know. When I say this in Finland, everybody laughs because apparently it's not a well-known fact that we are the best marketeers. But, I mean, I'm working on it. Uh, but yeah, the, the, thing is, the thing is that there is nothing kind of like there that says that we, you know, are better at making games or, you know, better at making mobile phones. I mean, some people believe that we were very good at that at, you know, some point in history, not too recent history. But still, I mean, there's nothing there that would make us better or worse. You know, better or worse at making games, better or worse at marketing. 
And I think this is something that is very, very important, that there's no reason why we can't be very successful, you know, here in Lithuania, in Finland, anywhere in Europe. But the problem is that there is not that kind of attitude, there's not that kind of ambition. And this is, I think, very, very big problem when I look at Europe. So we need to kind of like get our act together and, you know, like start investing in the future and like forget about the vision of, you know, all of us living on some farm in France because it's not going to happen. So we need to kind of like think about that. And I think that if you look at what we've done with Angry Birds, we're living proof of the fact that you can build the world's largest entertainment brand in Europe, in Helsinki, or you could do it here in Lithuania. No problem. No problem at all. And why can we do that? Because we have amazing education. I didn't know the facts about, you know, the education here in Lithuania when I got here, but I saw the slides that, okay, you have the most educated women on the planet, I guess, so, you know, that's a good start. And then we should show that in the startups, in the business that's created as well. So uh, education is very, very important. And I think one reason why we have been successful, uh, if I look at Rovia and look at Angry Birds, we have our education to thank for a lot of that. We have an amazing educational system, great schools, always ranking very high up there when you do the international comparisons. Education is so, so important. And this is also why at Rovio we look at ourselves not as a games company, not as an entertainment company, but as a triple E company. Entertainment, obviously, education, and we apply entrepreneurship to everything we do. So we are an interesting mix of skills and capabilities. And what we have de decided to do in the area of education, we've decided to give the world education. So as I said, we're crazy ambitious. So we actually decided to do that. It's a pretty big statement, but uh, you know, we think we can do it. So we have a big books and learning uh, team. Last year we published something like 100 books, most of them in the learning area. So we're building games, we're doing animation, we're building learning products at a massive scale. And uh, we have some pretty cool partners. So we partner with NASA, you know, those guys who send people to space. Uh, we partner with National Geographic, with CERN, and uh, the Finnish Board of Education. So, you know, like some people who actually know about uh, education and learning. And our goal is to make learning fun. And what I mean by that, uh, if you look at, again, you know, example from back home in, in Finland, and I guess it might be the same here, uh, boys speak better English than girls. And do you know why? because they play more games and the games are in English. So they're learning while they're having fun. It's not like they decided, that, okay, I'm going to speak better English than the girls. It's that they decided that, oh, I'll you know, forget about you know, that boring school thing and I'll play games and, I'll, and then they end up speaking better English, having bigger vocabulary because they're learning while they're having fun. So at Rovio, we want to apply that to all learning. Right now we're working with CERN you know, those guys with that big, you know, uh, uh, collider there in Geneva. We're uh, working with them to teach kids about quantum physics. And, you know, there's no reason why not. So we're working on that. And with NASA, we're working about on space. So we have our own space program. We launched our Angry Birds space game in space on the International Space Station and was the first game ever that was launched in space. And again, people thought we're crazy when they say, okay, we're going to, you know, like, launch the game in space. But we were told that it's never been done before. Okay, that was true, but now it's been done. We did it. It wasn't that difficult. And now we have an amazing partnership with NASA. And while we're at it, we also built two Angry Birds activity parks in Houston and in, uh, at the Camp, uh, Kennedy Space Center in Florida. So... Um, Besides, you know, games and animation, 
making a few toys, we're also building parks. Just opened our second park in the UK the other week. We had three parks in Brazil, five in Finland, building quite a few of them in China. Hopefully we'll see some here in Lithuania as well. Uh, so uh, active in a lot of, uh, lot of areas. Uh, but we are in the business of interactive entertainment and I'm looking at kind of like the time I have left. So I could go on and on for hours and hours talking about, you know, the Finnish dream and Angry Birds and all of that. But it's a lot more fun if we make it interactive. So uh, why don't we open up the floor for a few questions? Do you have some mics or something? <laughs> or the amazing app? Let's, uh, let's do both, actually, because there's a question here that I really do want to ask you, and I, I wouldn't mind knowing who asked it, and it's just, why Peter hate pigs so much? Uh, who, whose question is that? You wanna, who, oh. who was it? That's someone in silver, I know. Actually, right? great question, and that reminds me of one thing that I uh, want to tell you about also, like in the area of marketing and branding. So, Angry Birds is a great brand because it begs for a question. Why are the birds angry? Yeah. Because the pigs stole their eggs. So you get into the story. So just, you know, brands, kind of like in isolation without a story, are just like empty brands. With Angry Birds, it's like all good, all great brands. It comes with a story. People relate to stories. And again, you get into kind of like this virality, word of mouth. That's actually a big, big part of the success of Angry Birds. And another thing, uh, you know, branding and marketing, it's very, very important. That was already touched on in, in the previous dis uh, presentations. You have to stand out. How many people here are wearing red? Not that many. A few. But when I go to most business conferences, I'm surrounded by bunch of guys in dark suits. So it's like extremely easy for me to stand out. And that's, you know, like the most important thing in marketing, stand out. And it's not easy. You have to have the courage. You have to dare to be different. Very, very important. And that's at Rovio, we always try to do everything differently because just doing things differently adds value. Every market out there today crowded you know, for every Angry Birds, there's hundreds of thousands not so Angry Birds, not so successful <laughs> games. So, yeah. Not so devious pigs. Yeah. Well, let me ask a follow up question because it's sort of similar. I'm going to alter the question a little bit. The uh -huh. question is do you need a lot of programming skills to create game apps? Uh, like Angry Birds, but I think the question uh, maybe more compelling is Angry Birds looks pretty damn simple. Is it damn simple because it is or does it just look that way because it's you doesn't design it that way? Uh, I think that uh, There was another quote so uh, like a lot of this stuff was already covered But I think that was like in the Richard Branson slide earlier that that you know make it simple and it's actually pretty damn difficult to make things simple because especially when you work with engineers and you work work with uh, uh, you know, technical people, you always want to kind of like add every single feature, and it's a lot more, <laughs> <di> <laughs> a there lot more difficult to, out. to uh, you know, kind of like take out features and, and kind of like keep it simple. So Angry Birds was really built eight-month process with simplicity in mind. It has to be really, really easy to pick up. So we wanted to eliminate all text, there are very few words in Angry Birds. It's all visual. That's you know why your your two-year-old can pick up Angry Birds and immediately play it. There's no like long instructions, no manual, nothing to read. It's it's really really easy to play, and that's because we made it so. Then we also designed it to be a bit addictive, so it's uh, you know easy to pick up, very difficult to put down. And a lot of these things, they don't happen by accident. I mean, it's, it's uh, a lot of design that goes into that. So it's uh, all uh, carefully thought of. So uh, as I said, you know, we tried to eliminate luck and uh, luck had uh, very little to do with it in the end. Well, let's ask one final question because you, you uh -huh. kind of touch on the idea of this is a charming experience. And I, I'm sure you must have heard some kind of story. What's the funniest story about someone getting caught playing Angry Birds or the productivity or mm. costumes or what's, what's just crazy that you never would have thought? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think that 
kind of like you get into the, at at uh, some point you get uh, to to a place where you kind of like nothing surprises you anymore, and and I think that uh, it's been a little bit like that for me for for a while. But uh, I, I think that uh, looking at at um, the most typical feedback that we get, and I already had somebody today, you know, tell me exactly that that I never play games, but I play Angry Birds. And I think that this is something that you know happens all the time. And I think that that's actually a great message because it also says that we've expanded the market for games, for mobile entertainment. And uh, and I think that's uh, that's again uh, you know really happy when I hear that. Well, it, uh, does that mean? Do you ever fancy that maybe you are creating something that's not a game then? Primarily. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean you, well, if that's the truth, then mathematically yeah. I haven't made a game. I've made. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, for, we're, we're not a games company and we're active in all areas of entertainment. So, uh, you know, I mentioned our animated series. We're now doing 100 million views every month uh, of that. And we're going to take that to kind of like a totally different level going forward. But what we are all about, it's our fans and our brand. And we want to be a permanent part of uh, pop culture. So when you look at what we're doing, we're not building something for like 100 days. But with Angry Birds, we're building something that will last for like a hundred years or hopefully like longer, but a hundred years again is, is a good start. So kind of well, that's the thinking. I do have one last question then. The, uh, you know, there's that Chekhov quote that if there is a rifle over the mantelpiece in the first act, it must be fired by the third act of a play. So is it the Angry Birds equivalent if you appear with angry birds on stage at the beginning of your mm. talk, you must throw them at pigs by the end? Yeah, okay, yeah I, I, I actually <laughs> wouldn't say throwing them at pigs, I would just say that uh, throwing that at fans in this game. Fair, <laughs> fair <laughs> enough, but so, whatever it takes. Well, let's yeah. take him out, as you had the only he can do so it, I ladies like and gentlemen. Two, two of these, and I think that, okay, you diamond people have already gotten like everything, like the vodka back <laughs> and all that. But, but anyway, so I'm going to try to actually see if I can get these like a bit further. It might hit some diamond uh, <laughs> club people, but let's see what I can do. <laughs> oh, okay, no, nah, two, that's far, you got it. And then uh, one more, anybody, anybody? That's, that's what you get for stealing Peter's eggs. <laughs> wow. This is... I really need a slingshot to kind of like you really go further. You absolutely but, do. But Thank hey, you very much, Peter. Thanks a lot. Peter. Thanks I appreciate a lot. it.